Hello chess fans, in today's video I'm going to present you with a complete repertoire that is very aggressive for both white and black. And this was actually my first or second repertoire which I used from all the way from 1600 over the board to 1900 over the board. And then when I hit 2000 like I am now I decided to switch because you should always keep flexible with what you play. So what I'm going to be recommending with the white pieces is to go for e4. And I think e4 is the most aggressive way to play and pretty much the best way to play for most amateur level players like ourselves. So after e5, I'm going to switch my recommendation from the beginner chess video, which you can check out in the cards. Instead, I'm going to recommend you play knight f3, knight c6, and d4. And after e takes d4, uh, most people here would capture back. But I think a more aggressive approach is to go bishop c4. And this is very fun for white. So after bishop c5, here you have to actually remember something. You have to remember to go knight g5. This is my favorite move and a move I played for a long time and had a lot of success with. And here what a common trap is, is if they go knight e5 attacking the bishop and defending the pawn, I could go knight takes f7 and after takes here, takes, takes here, check, we pick up a pawn. But after knight g5, the best move would be knight h6 and after takes, 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 we have this tactic again with uh, picking up the loose bishop and after they go g6 here. The position is roundabout even and a lot of people don't recommend this because of that fact. But looking at it with an objective view, I really prefer white here because of the fact that white simply has better king safety and more uh, central presence to be honest because after f4 we're going to control a little bit more of the center. So here I prefer white and I think white is doing very well here. Another line to remember is that if they go knight f6, here you have to switch plans. You can no longer go knight g5 because then they have uh, d5 ideas now that's supported by the knight. But here we can go e5, d5, bishop b5. And here just remember that if they don't play d5, if they play something like here after castles, rook e1, we should be slightly better. So if they go d5, knight here, and knight here, just remember after knight takes d4, they should really defend this. If they go bishop c5, just remember bishop e3 and the position should transpose. But after bishop d7, we just take here with our bishop takes takes. And again, this is another position that is objectively equal. But here I really like white's plan with f3 and after knight g5 going f4 and just attacking the king side along with something like bishop e3, knight bdd2, maybe knight c3 in some positions. And the position is just very pleasant for white and white can just seemingly attack black easily. So next, let's look at the Sicilian, which is the most popular way for white to play. So my previous video, I recommended going knight c3, g g3, bishop g2, knight e2, and something like that. And I still think that's a fine way to play, but I'm going to switch my recommendation a little bit. After knight c3, what I'm instead going to recommend is the Grand Prix attack, which I actually personally, this is the only thing on the list that I have not played myself, but I have seen from other people it's very successful, and at least at the intermediate level, it's extremely popular as well. So after knight c6, you're going to go f4 instead of g3. And after here, here, our plan is just to be to get rid of this bishop, play d3, go castles, queen e1, and queen here, and the position should be nice for us. So let's just look at this. Notice that if they allow us to take here and do this, white should be significantly better. So they should go knight d4. And after knight d4, just remember to take it, take it, go knight e2, and the position should be round about even after queen b6 and a4. This would be uh, somewhat of the main line, and it looks pretty good for white, as white is going to play d3, bring the bishop back to b3, and look forward to f5 ideas, castles, queen e1, queen h4, like in the main lines. If they go d6, this is even better for us, because after f4, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5, here we get this with check, and they don't have this knight d4 move, so if they were to go here, we have a really nice plan of going d3, castles, queen e1, queen here, playing f5, bishop h6, and knight g5. I know that's a lot of arrows, but please pause if you don't get this, or try to try this out in your own game, see some other resources on this, because it's really important that you get this if you want to use this repertoire. And this position is very pleasant for white. After e6, just remember we're still going to go f4. But here the only difference is if they go knight c6, we can do something similar with knight f3, bishop b5. But if they go d5, here we have to switch plans with knight f3, d takes here. And uh, after knight c6, as you can see by the arrows, you're going to go b3, bishop b2. And the pawn on f4 is going to help you control the dark squares and the center. So next, let's look at the French and the Karo Khan. So my recommendation against the French and the Karo Khan is exactly the same. And you might say, wait, how can it be exactly the same? But the variations I'm going to recommend are going for what's called the two knights. So this is a Karo Khan two knights. And I feel like this, I have played the entirety of my, my chess playing career. And I think it's pretty much the best practical weapon for us club players because it just um, forces black to go for 
positions where white just has a small advantage and it's really easy to prove and you can also get a lot of aggressive positions. So a lot of Kero Khan players I've seen play this d takes move and this is a fine move but after here a lot of people play bishop f5 going for the main line but after knight g6, knight, uh, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6 this is not like the main line if we play d4 it transposes but here we can go knight e5, bishop h7, queen h5 attacking this for g6, queen, queen f3 this is in one of my videos as well. Uh, knight of six and queen b3 i actually had this over the board and i was able to win the game with this simple fork this is important to remember but you can slow down the video and try to go through this if you don't entirely understand so what they what they can also do is go knight of six but after here knight e4 d4 i feel is simplest enough and after takes takes the position is slightly better for white because of the fact that they have a bigger center and the the bishops are going to be very strong because they're open after bishop g4 which is the main line just go h3 and after uh Bishop takes e3, queen takes e3, white should be slightly better with the plan you've seen here, maybe with d3 as well, and they just have the bishop pair, and you can also play g4 ideas, this is also possible after going like d3 and then go g4, bishop g2, bishop d2, castle king side, and you can also be aggressive there. After bishop h5, all you have to remember is just to go d4, and here white is just slightly better because they control more of the center, and this bishop is kind of misplaced over here, so white would be slightly better here again. So let me just see if there's any variations I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, after uh, another thing to do, no, is that you start with this knight because we, we want to, after g6, play d4. And here we just control the center and be significantly better. So next, let's look at the French. So the French goes with e6. Again, I'm going to recommend playing knight c6. And that's so that if e6, we can go back into what we know. Uh, a common, not mistake I see, but maybe an inaccuracy for our repertoire would be to start with knight f3 but here they can go c5 and transpose into sicilian which we don't play because we don't play sicilian with the uh, knight on f3 so after knight f3 uh knight c6 d5 knight f3 we're going to go for the two knights variation here if they go knight c knight f6 which is the main line e5 knight fd7 d4 i'm just going to show you a miniature i had once d takes c5 knight c6 attacking the pawn here here we have to play d takes c5 because our center is too weak because we can't play c3 takes takes knight c6 bishop f4 defending this and here my opponent took on c5 i played bishop d3 and my opponent castled which is actually a blunder which is one of the main reasons i love playing this as white here i went bishop takes a7 king takes 7 knight g5 king g8 and queen h5 and my opponent actually resigned here because there's simply no way to stop this mate because if they go here this is a classic mate i think and checkmate so this would be a classic mate if they do that and yeah just don't worry if they do anything else white is still winning after queen d3 and i just don't think there's a way to stop the threats for example f5 queen g3 is still winning so this is a very tricky way to meet the french and after d4 which i think is the best line but is pretty much never played 92 c5 defending their pawn here i recommend a very crucial move i think the only move that lets white play for advantage which is b4 and if they take here we're going to take here and have this monstrous bishop here but after knight f6, e5, knight fd7, bx c5, bishop xc5, we can go for either takes here, takes here, and takes here, and they take here, and we, our bishop is very good on b2, or something else. But I think uh, this position should be a lot better for white, and not a lot better for white, slightly better for white maybe, and at least it should be pleasant. So next, let's look at all the other defenses. And I'm again going to switch my recommendations for pretty much all these defenses. So against e4, d6, d4, knight f6, you're going to go knight c3, g6. And here what I'm going to recommend is a simple English attack or the 150 attack against the perk. And I feel like it's really simple to play. So I'm going to show you a miniature. After bishop e3, if they go c6 and delay this bishop g7, we can no longer go for our plan, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, but instead we'd go queen d2 b5 they're threatening b4 and to go here and after bishop d3 bishop g7 the position should be slightly better for white maybe upwards of plus one so this wouldn't be a very good defense but after bishop g, uh, bishop e3 what most of your opponents i think will do will go bishop e7 here you go queen d2 threatening a battery here your opponent will castle go f3 to stop knight g4 ideas c6 castles b5 they're gonna try to attack you go bishop h6 and the idea is first we go bishop h6 then march our h pawn up the board and then it should be checkmate because you'll see what happens my opponent went queen a5 king b1 i had to just get out of this line of fire this is always a useful move to play king b1 knight bdd7 h4 bishop b7 this was really a waste of a move and here i played h5 and my opponent actually just blundered the game you'll see why this pawn is not free if they take this way we go here and it's just mate and my opponent took this way, but after rook takes here and queen g5, there was actually no way to stop mate. And my opponent just resigned here because after takes here, we take here. Notice that if ever they, let's say, take here first, maybe, all we have to do is take here and after here, go g4, knight f6. 
And the idea would be maybe to go knight c2, knight g3 here and dislodge a knight from h5. So that's the English attack, basically in action. So now let's look at the other things they can play. d5, all I'm going to recommend is to go e takes, queen takes. And here 99% of people do recommend this move knight c3. But I feel at the intermediate level, it's pretty much okay to know some theory. And often some positions, the knight on b1 does not really want to go to c3. The pawns want to be in the center. So here I'm going to recommend going for the Capablanca center pretty much, which is to go knight f3. And now here if your opponent allows you, like goes here and you get d4 and let's say they go c6, c4. Uh, queen queen d8 and knight c3 this position is like completely winning almost for uh, white because they just have a much improved version of the regular scandinavian and after uh, let's say bishop f5 uh, bishop e2 and bishop e6 this is actually called the capa capa blanca center because uh, a famous player capa blanca used to play this a lot against uh i think it's like the selector slav something like that and it was pretty common and the idea is mainly to break with d5 but after bishop g4, which is the best move, here knight c6, trying to prevent d4, d4 castles, bishop e3, here we can look to c4 on the next move, and white should be significantly better here. So yeah, against this, just remember to go knight f3. Against knight f6, you're going to do the same thing here, knight takes d4, d4, and the a reason we go knight f3 first is because if we go d4 immediately, they have bishop g4, which we don't want to allow, so we'd go knight f3 just to disallow that variation, and after knight takes d5, d4, c4, then we have another Capablanca center. So after knight of six, which is the Alakine, this is a pretty tricky way to play for the black pieces, and it's very provocative and hard to meet. Unfortunately, in this repertoire, since we play the Scotch Gambit, we can't play knight c3 because it allows e5. But what we can do is play e5 ourselves, and after knight d5, there are a, ver a lot of tricky variations with d4, with c4, with knight f3. These are all very tricky variations, but the easiest variation, I feel, is just to go knight c3. And here, white is still better. But it's a lot simpler. If they go e6, you can just inflict a structural damage on them. But they should really take here. You take with this. Now both your bishops are open and both their bishops are closed. So here white should be better even with the structural defect. d6, knight f3. And here in one game, I had my opponent go bishop g4. And after h3, they went here and g4. And this position was very pleasant for me because I threatened to trap their bishop. And instead, they should have taken here, but after takes, takes, takes here, white is just slightly better because the king can't castle, the bishops are going to come out. And yes, unfortunately, uh, in an aggressive player's repertoire, we do have to allow this queen trade. But this, uh, an, even an aggressive player, you should be happy with uh, endgame that's just much better. This position is around about plus one. And another line would be if they go knight c6, you can go for bishop b5 and just pin this. Or you could go for a bishop f4 even and just go for a similar endgame. But here it's less good. Okay, so now we're going to go look at the black pieces. And first is our recommendation against e4. Now, keep on, keep in mind, you have to have something against e4, d4, c4, and knight f3. And I'm going to give you that all here. So against e4, I'm going to recommend you play c6. And why am I switching from e5 to c6? Because at the intermediate player level, against e5, sometimes your opponent can do boring stuff like the four knight scotch. Which, I mean, I mean, you can play that, but it's like, it's very hard to win that. So I feel like a more practical choice is the Karo Khan, and this is still a hyper-aggressive thing that's played by Ali Reza Faruja to win at the top levels. So the main move is d4. After d3, you can just go e5 and go d6, as I've arrowed here, and the position is ev even because they've blocked their bishop, and you're probably going to block your bishop too. So they should go, uh, this is another move they can play c4, d5, takes, takes, takes. If they go d4 here, that transposes into what we're going to cover. But after takes, just remember not to take with your queen. I know it may look tempting, but the pawn's not going anywhere after knight f6, and this position should be slightly better for black in play. They can also go knight d3, d5, knight c3, which is what my recommendation was, but here I think the simplest is to go for the Tarash variation, this variation right here. I might have gone over that too fast, just take the pawn, go knight f6, takes, takes. And I gave this in my white as slightly better for black, and yet, uh, sorry, so slightly better for white, and yes, white is slightly better here, but with plans of going bishop d6, knight bd7, knight f8, knight g6, knight f4, or something like bishop d6, knight b7, knight b6, knight d5, knight f4, and castles maybe with h5, black should be not coming up under attack here, and if white castles kingside, white even has to be careful, because sometimes these pawns can jump up the board, because, you know, we have an extra pawn here, a king should be safer. So instead, they should go d4, and after d5, e5, e5 is the main line. And here, I'm going to stray away from recommending bishop f5, because bishop f5 is a little bit complicated, and I feel for us, like, less uh, high-rated players, it's simply easier to go for c5. And here, I bet 90% of your opponents will go for c3, and after knight c6, knight f3, bishop g4, you have a much better French defense. But the best move is to go dxc5, excuse me. 
And here, unfortunately, we can't go for this because it's actually refuted after f4. And this is supposed to be very bad for black. But instead, we can go e6 and then take on c5 with our bishop next. And the position is pretty close to equal, but uh, your opponent probably shouldn't know this. Let me just give a sample line if your opponent tries to hang on you to the pawn. Bishop e3, knight d7, attacking both pawns. Bishop e5, pinning the knight, knight e7, looking to go knight c6 or knight f5. And after knight f3, knight f5, threatening to take here and then uh, take here b4 you can just take on e3 and here white maybe up a pawn but their uh structure is so terrible that black is actually uh winning more games than white here so that's the advanced variation so after knight c3 what i'm going to recommend is the same thing i recommended against knight f3 first which is to take take and go uh for this position again and as you can see by the arrows these are the common ideas maybe i'll add two more arrows like this and yeah, black should be doing pretty well here. I recommend that you pause the video here and look at these arrows and maybe play this a few times in your own game. I'm probably going to have some videos with this type of structure up. I'm going to try to play some rabbit games with this. But yeah, definitely make sure to test this out on your own. Maybe look at it a little bit yourself. Uh, so against the uh, exchange variation, what you're going to do is, okay, if they go for the pan of attack, the pan of attack is known to be equal after knight c6, knight, uh, knight c3, and e6. I feel like this is just an IQP. Any intermediate player should know what the IQP is. It's an isolated queen pawn. And basically, whenever this bishop moves, you're going to take here and make them lose a tempo. And then you can play against this pawn. And as you can see by the arrows, these are common ideas that you can play. Bishop d3 is considered the best way to get the exchange variation because if they go knight f3, they allow something like this, which is not supposed to be allowed. Uh, and you're not supposed to be able to get your bishop out easily, so they should go bishop d3, preventing bishop f5 and keeping an eye on bishop g4. And after knight f6, uh, they, sh they usually go c3. And this is actually what Ali Reza played in the Karakhan against somebody. I think it was Richard Report. But after c3, you can play this nice move, bishop g4. And the idea is just to get the bishop to g4 as quickly as possible. And basically, in the other line, you have problems with queen b3, because you can't go queen c7. But here, you can go queen c7. Because notice, let's just see the difference. If we go knight c6 here, they go bishop f4, and now we go bishop g4, which is the main line. After queen b3, we don't have queen c7, which we would want to put our queen on. But after this line, or sorry, after this line, we do have queen c7. And one of my opponents actually here thought they had a trick. They thought they had bishop f4, but after queen takes f4, queen takes b7, queen c1 was actually just checkmate. So this is a way to just mate your opponent in seven moves. But uh, what white should do here after queen c7 is just develop with something like h3. But after bishop h5, bishop g6, I feel like the position is very pleasant for black. So finally, let's look at the fantasy variation, which is maybe the trickiest variation against the Karo Khan. So here, what you have to remember is a very, very, very key move. It's to go queen b6. And after, in this position, the position should be equal. But the idea is that this bishop can't really develop without hanging this pawn. So the best move would be to go here. And after takes takes e5, this is a better version of uh, the other variation, the main line, which would be takes takes and now e5. Because white still has access to something like uh, c3, which is going to solidify their center. But after their, a queen b6, they no longer have access to c3 because they've already committed to here. And you might say, okay, then why don't they go c3 in this position? It's because we have the immediate e5 again. And if they take, they're going to have a terrible structure after here. They also have problems with this diagonal here. And if they don't take, well, they're just getting their center exploded. And basically, they haven't developed anything. And this is a kind of weak uh, pawn formation. We can even go f6 if we want to, but that's probably weakening too. Uh, so yeah, you go queen b6, takes, takes, and e5. And this position should be equal after playing the IEP, which is very uncommon to have an I isolated king's pawn but you can again use similar ideas from the isolated queen's pawn but here the best move would be bishop c5 and yeah they can't develop this piece again and the engines like uh, they, there should be a draw here maybe or sorry not there the engine saying this should be a draw but uh, obviously you can go for a win here instead okay so now let's look at d4 defenses so against d4 you're gonna play d5 and after c4 keeping with our our uh, repertoire you're going to play c6 now what you could do if you want is start with c6 this is a pretty fine way to start and after e4 you have a karo khan uh and after c4 you have a slav but this is a little bit inflexible against knight f3 here and the london system this is just not the best way to play against the london system committing this so early so instead after c6 uh knight f3 c4 we should play c6 against knight f3 just remember to or sorry against knight f3 instead of c4 
instead of this, just go knight f6. And whenever they play c4, play here. And against uh, London system, I'm still going to recommend the same thing, the same easy thing, which is to go bishop f5 and just play the copycat system. And you might say, well, how is this aggressive? But the thing is, in a copycat system, the better player is always going to win. And this is the simplest thing to learn against the London. If you want to play something more critical, uh, I would recommend playing c5, e3, and knight c6, along with queen b6. And the position should be slightly better for black, but you have to know a lot of lines here. And maybe it's not so practical against the London of all openings. c4, c6, knight, knight f3 would be the main line. If they go knight c6, you can just probably transpose. But this would be a shallop defense. Just remember, whenever they play bishop e3, they're not pressuring the center. So you can play this. And we have a reverse London after e6, knight bd7, maybe h6 to preserve the bishop. After knight f3, knight f6, knight c3. Here, unfortunately, we can't play bishop f5. This is a common trick because queen b3 would be winning for white. So here we have the switch plans. Also, if they play uh, e3, the quiet slide, then we can play this because they're not pressuring the center. And after knight c3, e6 would be very decent for white, or sorry, for black. So after this, we can't play bishop f5. We always have to be careful of this. So here, what you should do is take. And the, the most common move here at my level and the amateur level is e4 playing the Geller gambit, which I feel is very possible for white. But after b5, just keep in mind, this gambit is supposed to be dubious e5 knight d5 this would be just be a sample line and white should uh black is like minus two here black is just completely winning with this bishop being a monster but obviously it's not so simple in practice so i recommend looking at those lines a little bit more bishop e2 seems to be a better move according to the engine and here white seems to be doing well but the main move would be a4 to just stop any of this nonsense with b5 but here we can finally pay bishop f5 because there's no queen b3 with pressure here and here and after e3, e6, bishop takes c4, we have another Karakhan like center. And this position is roundabout even. It may not be exactly even because white, black does have a little bit less space. But you can look forward to ideas like knight e4, knight d5, maybe knight f6, bringing the other knight there, preserving the bishop with h6, bringing the bishop to b4 or maybe to d6. And this bishop is kind of bad on c1. So finally, we're nearly done is c4 and knight f3 and again through this whole experience this whole everything you've learned today probably i hope you've learned something you should always remember to pause in key moments try this out in your own games maybe look further if you're an intermediate player but or uh, aggressive player sorry because these important things are important to remember so against knight f3 what you're going to do is go d5 and here i've only really given one continuation this would transpose against this you can just play c6 and g3 is the only continuation I gave, but after c6, bishop g2, all you have to remember is to go bishop g4, castles, knight d7, preparing e5, and your opponent either stops e5 or doesn't. After d4, you can go knight f6, e6, bishop e7, castles, and you have a classic Karakhan like center, London like center. c4 is a little bit more tricky. You should meet this with c6 if you're a Karakhan player, because you're not afraid of e4, you're not afraid of d4, but the only line to keep it, uh, like, what do you call it, individual, I guess is to go knight f3, I'm sorry, unique, uh, is to go knight f3, d5, and e3. And this would be the only way to keep it original. They could also go g3, but I feel like this is kind of an unsound sacrifice after going here, bishop g2. It's probably slightly sound, but maybe you could go knight f6 and go bishop f5, something like that. e3, just remember to go knight f6, knight c3. And this is a really, really, really tricky way to play for white. And if you ever want to switch from the e4 lines I'm recommending, I highly recommend you check this out as white because this is a very tricky setup, playing the ready like this with e3 and c4. And here, I think the best move for white, for black, is unfortunately to go e6. But that wouldn't really keep with our uh, recommended repertoire because they could go d4 and we're not playing, we're playing a semi-slav, not a slav. So instead, I recommend bishop g4 as the best move. And after queen b3, queen b6, this is one of the most challenging lines against our repertoire. So there may be somewhere to go for something more. For example, uh, against the English, maybe you instead play e5 and play uh, the regular uh, e4, e5. But here you can't get away with as much. Unfortunately, here we probably have to switch to a uh, closed Sicilian setup, probably. And the position should be roundabout even again. So that's the end of today's video, guys. A very long video covering a lot of things. If you have any questions, please remember to tell me down below. I'll answer anything. And I really hope you enjoy this repertoire. It's very aggressive. It's very, I feel, simple. And I feel like it was what I used for a long time. Uh, maybe not these exact lines, but lines extremely similar to this. And, well, 
that's enough said. I'll see you guys in the next one.